Hello everyone, just going to give you a quick demonstration video on a Stuart Warner South Wind heater. Now there's not many demonstration videos out there online, so I thought I'd make one here. This is a 1941 Plymouth, and I finally got the heater to work properly. There are some things that you're going to probably need to know here. So this here is a diagram of the heater, shows you how it works. When you pull the control knob out, it pulls the plunger out of the vacuum line, which is what makes the heater start to work. So when the vacuum line is open, vacuum is sucking fuel in from the carburetor, which then goes into the igniting chamber, ignites under a glow plug, the combustion chamber gets hot, fan turns on and blows heat, exhaust goes back into vacuum lines. And it gives you that demonstration there. So if you look inside the engine compartment here, very most important thing here are two items, and that is this jet tube, an emulsion tube here, which is a gas metering system, and it also mixes air and gas together. And it comes right out of that float bowl there. And the vacuum kit, Southwind heater sole vacuum kits, different styles. I have kit 47 which has two gas um, vacuum line intakes here. You need a very good vacuum to run the heater. And the vacuum kit goes between the manifold and the carburetor. My heater would not work correctly until I got that vacuum kit. So first, fuel comes in and it's mixed with air and it's also metered. It will then travel through the brass line there to the heater carburetor, which is again mixing more air into the gas, which then it goes into the um, combustion chamber here, the igniting area right in here. This tab here is the heater choke, and there's a little bimetal tab in there that closes an air hole. That should be just touching the hole when it's cold. The bimetal strip will pull back when this line gets hot which it will get extremely hot. You will want to have a hard line in. So let's take a look inside then the cab. And the heater's running already. If all is properly connected and hooked up, it should start within 90 seconds. At least that's what the advertisements say and I've had um, some issues with that, but that is due to a small speck of dirt inside that jet tube. And it clogs the hole and the gas isn't efficient enough. So when you first start the heater, you would pull this all the way out and that starts that siphon of gas. The igniter turns on and glows hot red in there and then eventually the combustion chamber gets hot enough that the fan will turn on. And right now I've got nice and warm heat coming out. And that is steady now, no matter if I'm driving or not, you'll have heat coming out of this heater. It actually gets so hot that sometimes you may wanna push this in one notch and that's on low heat. Now there is a ticking noise that you will hear when it first starts up and that is actually uh, telling you that it is igniting. And normally once it's fully ignited and really hot, the ticking noise will go away. And of course, this here is the adjustment. You can change the way, uh, which way the air comes out here. And it's otherwise very simple unit. If you find one that's never been really altered or worked on, I found mine in an original box. Plug, plug and play, pretty much. Well, I hope the video uh, helps some people get theirs hooked up. You want to hook it up as I hook mine up, all hard line installation, as this tube here is extremely hot. You almost cannot touch it when it's running. 
and this is the key piece. Without this, you cannot run your heater. This jet tube is very important. And also that vacuum kit to give you good vacuum. I originally had mine hooked up just to the manifold hole and did not work well because as soon as I stepped on the gas, I lost vacuum. So, all right, well, there you guys go. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps. If it uh, have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you.